Hey guys, this is Mr. King X Slayer coming at you with a video. I was gone down in Hawaii for about um, a week and a half. I just got back. I had a lot of fun and I went to an air museum so I got all this great footage. It's got all these old World War II planes and I'm just going to make a slideshow of them and show you everything that is there. So just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. This is the A6M2 down there. And we all know A6M2s in War Thunder, they're really slow, agile, and all, but this plane was actually really fast in real life, and the story behind this plane was um, they, the Japanese launched off their aircraft carriers, and they were on their way, the first wave hit Pearl Harbor, and this pilot that was flying this A6M2 was in the second wave, and um, with all the flak and AA that was shooting at him, his plane got really badly damaged, and what the um, Japanese said, if their planes got damaged, just land on this little island kind of further away from Pearl Harbor and we'll send a, like, a little cruiser to pick you up. And so they thought it was on ham... Uh, sorry, ugh, I cannot speak right now. There's no one that lived on that island, but they're wrong. Some guy <laughs> owned his own island. He had his little farm there and he knew there was going to be a surprise attack. So he set up all these trenches. This guy tried to land, blew up his plane. So his remains, there was just a few things, so they had to make a remodel of this, so this isn't his real plane, but there were his remains there, and I couldn't get a picture of that, but that's the A6M2. Now we move over to the story of Midway and kind of these planes. This is a Wildcat. It was armed with four 12.7 machine guns, as you know, and it wasn't that good of a fighter at the early years. This is an SBD Dauntless Dive Bomber. It sunk five of the six Japanese aircraft carriers that attacked Pearl Harbor down in Midway. It sunk four of them in the first five to seven minutes, and then sunk another one later that day, and the last one was sunk by um, a TBF Avenger torpedo bomber. And they really, really loved using the SBD Dauntless Dive Bombers because it was very accurate and just was easy, cheap to use. It get shot down a lot by flak but as you can see like that little hook right there it just like swings the bomb right down to the target and it just gets it right on it and there's another aerial view of the SBD Dauntless dropping a bomb so now we move to the P-40. The P-40 was a tremendous fighter back at early wars during Pearl Harbor. Flying Tigers has this plane is right here but the backstory of this plane right here is there's this army military guy and he had all these great ideas so he got sent down to China to help the Chinese fight off the Japanese and so they sent a hundred P-40s with him and then they all raided they were successful they only lost three out of the hundred P-40s and they went against like 800 Japanese planes and that created the 14th Army Air Corps and as you can see coming right up here on this left aileron these are all the pilots that signed it after the war ended and then on the right aileron right here were all the mechanics for this plane so in the end this plane was a tremendous aircraft when they created the 14th army air corps they sent over like 500 but with this P-40 right here is the one they used during Pearl Harbor and its attack. Not much story there, just defended. And this is the engine of the P-40, as you can see. It looks really powerful, and it wasn't too reliable, actually. Now, ask yourself, what do these two 500-pound bombs go to? Well, they go to this. The B-25, the Doolittle Raid. This was Jimmy Doolittle's actual B-25 all fixed up. And as you can see, there he is. It's not the real one. It's rubbered, of course. And that's his B-25. That That's his emblem, the ruptured duck. Um, and as they were going through the raid, Doolittle uh, was all upset. He couldn't. He just hated it because when he came back because he crashed his B-25, he thought he was going to get like kicked out of the military but he got awarded like three medals one of them being the medal of honor the highest rank ever for uh, Air Force pilot I think and this is the engine to a B-25 
really powerful piston engine. This right here was the MiG-15. It always went against F-86 Sabres. Not much to talk about it. It was always in, during MiG Alley, and this was a big deal for the rush. Hey guys, this is the F-86A5 Sabre. The special thing about the Sabre, besides going against the MiG-15 and MiG Alley and all, is the reason why they had those yellow stripes on the wings, the fuselage, and the tail was to signify that it was American because in the heat of battle going really fast 800 kilometers with the sun glaring and all they couldn't tend from friend for foe so that's why they painted the yellow stripes on the saber and just look at it she's beautiful oh my god she's so sexy to see in real life now we move a bit more futuristic in the jet air I have no idea what this is but the nickname was I think the Widowmaker and it now here's the nickname Widowmaker <laughs> This is the MiG-29. As you can see, it's a bit more aerodynamic than the MiG-15. It's got that green nose cone, so it could fly a bit faster, and it still wasn't very good. It only had like 137 mil, as you can see it sticking out right there. This is a MiG-15 Eagle. I couldn't really get good pictures of it, but there's a good one of it. And then we move on to my very favorite jet of all times, the F-14 Tomcat. I don't know about it, but I don't know why I love it. Just as a kid, once I saw the movie Top Gun with Tom Cruise, and if you haven't seen it, seen that movie, great movie. Tell you go watch it. It you'll love it. But I've always loved this plane my whole life. After I saw that movie, it's just carrier-based Navy plane, so it could be launched off a carrier, land on a carrier. Just look how complex this was, and for the 90s, and like. Just look at it. Just oh, it's just such a nice looking plane and this one right here was the very last F fourteen Tomcat that was ever flown off a carrier. As you can see, I don't know if you can read that text, but it says like the late the Navy's last fighter. There's from the back by its two huge massive jet engines. Just look at those. And then there's its twenty millimeter Gatling gun, just Brrr, just shoot so fast. Oh, it's so nice. And then there's the front. Sorry for the people right there. That was with my group. And oh, I got I got to touch it and everything. But there's my favorite plane of all time, the F-14 Tomcat on display right there. Here is the actual anchor of the USS Arizona. It's pretty cool to see in person. You should definitely check it out. But this is how the Japanese attack Pearl Harbor from all those angles just right to Pearl Harbor. These were the armaments they used. Torpedoes, dive bombs, regular bombs, all types of bombs. This was Pearl Harbor at sunrise as you can read right there. That's what the Japanese saw right when they're flying into the harbor. Those were actual bullet holes from 1941, December 7th, and they had all of those bullet holes still stuck in the museum. They made the glass more strong, but those are real bullet holes from it. This is just a anchor kind of at the USS Arizona Memorial. It wasn't the real anchor, but that it, this is a submarine's propeller and back end. They didn't have it finished yet. This was a, uh, I think, the propeller off the Arizona. It didn't say anything. And now going a little bit more future here, a Tomahawk cruise missile. I had to put it in. They are just so cool. I love them. They're so powerful also. Hold up.